Good morning, Selena. How are you doing this morning? Doing good. Good. Thank you for being here. If you could please introduce yourself to the jury by stating your name and spelling for the court reporter. Selena Villatoro, S E L E N A V I L L A T O R O. Can you bring the mic a little bit closer to your mouth? Would you all hear me, please? And talk directly to the microphone, okay? And speak loud for us. Selena, how old are you? 26. <coughs> uh, do you have any children? Yes, sir. How many children do you have? Just one. And what's your child's name? Jaden Xavier Sanchez. And how old is Jaden? He's a year. <coughs> when is his birthday? October the 21st. Of what year? 2022. Okay. Now, Selena, do you know the defendant in this case, Mr. Hernandez? Yes, sir. How do you know Mr. Hernandez? Um, that was, that's my baby daddy. That's, yeah. Were y'all in a relationship at some point? Yes, sir. How long have you known the defendant? Um, since 2014. Yes. And how would you describe your relationship, boyfriend, girlfriend? On and off, yeah. All right, Selena, I'm going to fast forward to the date of October 21st, 2022, okay, the date uh, of the birth of your baby, Jake, okay? Mm -hmm. Do you recall going to the hospital that day? Um, yes, sir. Do you recall how you got there? Oh, uh, yes, sir. How did you get there? Um, Dexter took me. The defendant took you to the hospital that day? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, at that point in time, did Nestor know that he was the father of the child? Yes, sir. Okay. What was his overall demeanor about you having this child? Mm, he was happy. Okay. Did he spend some time with, uh, at the hospital with you that day on the 21st? Oh, uh, yes, sir. Okay. Um, any problems, any issues that day with Nestor? No, he was, he was happy. He was taking care of my baby when I rested. All right, so let's go forward to the next day, October 22nd, 2022, okay? Did Nestor return to the hospital that day? Oh, uh, yes, sir. Did you have any conversations with him prior to him coming to the hospital that day? Oh, uh, yes, sir. Uh, do you recall the nature of the conversation that you had with him? Yeah, there, he was happy. He was asking me if he, like, should cut his hair so we could take pictures, and he just seemed happy. Um, and at some point, did he actually physically arrive at the hospital? Yes, sir. Was that uh, around 10.30 a.m. that morning? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and did he come into your room at that, around that time? Yes, sir. Can you describe, um, did he have anything in his hands when he came into the room at that time? Yeah, when he came in, he had a, um, a beer in his hand. And just for the record, Selena, I'm going to have you identify Mr. Hernandez. Do you see him inside the courtroom today? Yes, sir. Can you identify him by what he's wearing this morning? Yeah, he's wearing the suit, the black suit. And just so the record is clear, if I'm seated in seat number one, my co-counsel is in seat number two, defense counsel is in three and four, all the way down the line, what seat would he be seated in? What number? He's in the fifth seat. Let the record reflect and uh, we can try to identify the defendant in open court. Right? The record will so reflect. Thank you. <coughs> and so he comes inside the room that morning with a beer. Selena, what are your thoughts at that point? I'm mad. Why are you mad? Because uh, I, was, I was tired and I just, I was just waiting for him to come so he could help me take care of our son. But I mean, as soon as I seen the beer in the center, I was mad. Um, and so you mentioned your baby. Was the baby in the room with you at the time? Yes, sir. He was okay. asleep. I didn't mean to cut you off. Please say it. What, what was your answer? Yes, sir. He was asleep. He was sleeping. Okay. Was he with you or was he in somewhere else inside the room? Uh, he was on the side in his little basket. In the bassinet? Yeah, in the bassinet. Okay. And at this point, he's a day, a day old at this point. Your son? 
Yes, sir. Okay. So take us from there. Um, what is Nestor's demeanor at that point in time? Um, well, I really didn't notice because as soon as he came in and I seen the beer in his hand, I just, I just laid down and I put a sheet over my head. Why'd you do that? Because I was just, I didn't, I didn't want to argue with him. I, didn't wanna, I just, you know, I just, I was just mad. I just didn't want to talk to him. Um, why were you upset that he had to be with him that morning? I mean, because our son's not even, he was, he's just a day old. Like, in, that's not a place to, like, who would do that, you know? I don't know. Okay. And so you put the sheet over your head because you didn't want to deal with it. Uh, what's the next thing that you want to happen? Um, um, I, I just, I remember him calling his, like, his family, like his brother, and speaking with, with them, telling, with his nieces, telling them that he loved them, and just talking to them for a little bit, telling them, like, to be good, and just, I don't know. I thought he was just drunk. That's why he was, like, being sentimental. Like, I didn't really think, of, think nothing of it. Did he appear to you to be drunk or intoxicated at that time? Oh, yes, sir. What was it about him that made you feel like he was intoxicated? I mean, just the way he was talking. Just, he was crying, talking to him. You said he was crying, what else, something? I'm sorry. He was talking to them, like, just, you know, just being sentimental with them. That's how he usually is sometimes. Okay, so you said that he was telling them that he loved them? Mm hmm And you call anything else that he was telling them on phone? Just to for them to be good. He was when he was talking to his nieces. He was telling them like just to be good and yeah. He just told his brother he loved them and just just pretty much stuff like that. Okay. And you felt at that time that he was just being sentimental. Is that what you said? Yes, sir. Okay. You didn't think much of that. No, no, sir. Okay. So what happens next? Um. After I guess he gets done talking to them, um, I think I hear like the the doors like from the closets opening, like he's like opening the closet doors, slamming them, and then the next thing I know he um, he like throws the like the little sliding like desk that they have right there. He throws it and then he like hits me in in my head with the gun and he was like. He was telling me, like, just, I don't know, just, I think he told me, like, who's, who's here, or something like that. I can't okay. remember. And so, just to kind of take this step by step, you said he began, he begins opening up the, the door of the closet, is that what you said? Yes, sir. At this point in time, is the sheet still on your head, or were you able to see what he's doing at that point? No, whenever he hit me in, in uh, my head, I took the sheet over my head, and I was like, what are you doing, you know, like, like chill. And then the first thing, I, like, I thought it was, like, because the beer has, like, spilled, and I, like, I spilled the whole beer, like, in the room, and I was, like, telling him to clean it up, you know, because, I mean, the nurses were going to come in, and I just didn't, you know, like, I don't, I don't know. I was just, you know, thinking about my son. Like, they smell the beer, they're probably going to, you know, like, get involved or something. So yeah. you mentioned that um, at this point he was, would you describe him as being angry? Oh uh, yes, sir. Um, you had mentioned that he had thrown the table inside the room. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Um, is that when the beer got spilled? You mentioned some beer spilling. Is that when the beer got spilled? Yes, sir. Um, you indicated that he looked inside the closet. Did he look anywhere else inside the room that you're aware of? I think the restroom. Yeah. Um, was Was there anybody else inside the room at that time? No. So he indicated that um, you had the sheet over your head and he began to hit you in the head with a gun. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Did you know when he had entered the hospital and specifically into your room that he had a gun at that point? No, no, sir. Did you see where he pulled the gun from? No, no, sir. Okay. You just felt him hitting you with the gun? Yes, sir. Do you recall how many times he struck you with the gun? I think the first time was just once. Okay. Just once. Is he making any statements while this is happening? Say anything to you? Um, 
I think he was just like saying like um, that he had told me to stop playing with him and he was just telling me stuff like that we're gonna die today. Just I mean stuff like that. Um, okay. So you said that as he's striking the gun, he's making these statements. What do you know what he is looking for when he's looking around the room? No, probably, I mean, I, I really don't, I don't know, probably somebody. And so he made a statement saying that um, that, you were gonna, that y'all were going to die that day, is that correct? Yes, sir. Did he mention if anybody else was going to die? Uh, yes, sir. He was saying that uh, whoever came, walked in the room was going to die with us and just, yeah. Did he say anything about um, people knowing about what he had done or what he's going to do inside the room that day? Did he mention anything about uh, being on the news? Oh, yes, sir. Yeah, he was saying that we were going to make the news. That just, yeah, saying that we were going to, yeah, just pretty much die and that he was going to take anybody else with whoever walked in the room and that we were going to make the news. Uh, So at this point, the sheet is off your head, is that correct? Yes, sir. Were you able to see uh, the gun at that point? Yes, sir. If you recall, can you describe what the gun looked like? Well, it was black. Yeah. Was it a small gun, medium gun, big gun? It was small. Is it the kind of gun that you hold in, inside your hand, like a handgun? Yes, sir. Okay. okay, so he's making the statements about the guys dying and um, anybody else coming inside the room being killed. Is that correct? No object to leaving. <coughs> oh, well. Is that correct on the statements he was making? Yes, sir. Okay, so what, what happens at that point? Mm. Uh, at the, I'm, I'm still trying to like plead with him, like telling him to clean, like clean the room, you know. And he was just like, he just kept repeating himself, like just that from that. Why was I playing with him, or just stuff like that? And then oh, he had asked me like to um, to press the call button because I guess like they were taking too long or something. Let's back up a little bit, Selena. Did anybody else come inside the room? Yeah, but I think that was before anything happened. Okay. Yeah. Who came inside the room? It was a, I think like a nurse. Um, she had brought me some, um, some medication. Okay. Was she black, white, or Hispanic? Uh, I honestly can't remember. And so the, the nurse uh, comes inside the room, and what happens when she's inside the room? Um, she she was asked, like, she gave me the medication, and um, I was going to pay for it, so I had to ask them to, if he could give me my, my bag, and um, he just threw it at me, and then I got the money, I, I paid the nurse, and then, like, she just walked out. That was it. Okay. Did anybody else come inside the room a little later on? Um, no, sir. No. So just going back to when uh, the defendant is assaulting you with the gun, he's hitting you with the gun, and he's making these statements about killing you all and killing anybody else who comes inside the room. Was the door open or closed at that time? Do you remember? <coughs> it was closed. And so at some point, did somebody else come inside the room while Mr. has the gun? Oh, yes, sir. Okay. Who was that? Um, one of the nurses, though, she I think she was uh, supposed to come in and check on me or something. Okay. She came in, and um, that's when Mr. walked up and went behind her and Shot her. Okay. Um, this person that came inside the room with just a shot, was she black, white, or Hispanic? Do you recall? Oh, she was black. And so uh, while this is all going on, where's your baby? Is your baby still in the bassinet? Oh, yes, sir. Okay. And so kind of take us through when Nestor shoots the lady.
lady that comes inside the room. Where was he? Where was he at prior to her coming inside the room? He was sitting down on the on the side of my bed, and when she came in, he stood up and uh, just went like around her, just and then shot her. Did he say anything prior to shooting her in the head? Well, I think he says like uh, he was gonna use the restroom or something like that. I can that he was gonna use the restroom. He just didn't mean he got up. Okay. So he said he was gonna go to the, use the restroom and then he got up and shot him back in the head. Yes, sir. Was uh, the lady who he shot was she doing anything at that point in time? What was she doing when she was shot in the back of the head? She was looking at her clipboard. She was just, like looking for something on in her clipboard. Clipboard. Was she paying any attention to Nestor? No. Did she say anything to him? Uh, no, sir. Did she make any kind of threats towards him? Oh, no. Did no, she sir. assault him in any way? No, sir. How close was the defendant to uh, the social worker when he shot her in the back of the I mean, like right, right behind her, just real close. And how many times did he fire? Once. What are your thoughts at that point? What's going through your mind? I, I'm still in shock. I can't believe it. I'm like, I don't know, I'm scared because now I actually believe him that he's going to kill me and, you know, and him in front of our son. So what does he do after he shoots his social worker? Um, he goes like on the side of me and uh, he pulls out his, the bullets from behind his back pocket or something and uh, reloads. He starts putting more bullets in his gun. Okay. And then, so you say he pulls the bullets out of his pocket? Yes, sir. You know which pocket he pulled it out of? Oh, uh, no, sir. Okay. And he starts to reload the gun, is that what you said? Yes, sir. Is he making any statements at that time? Yeah, um, he was. I mean, he was just telling me to enjoy the uh, the time I had with my son. Um, I mean, yeah, he was just saying that. He told me, he's like, yeah, that we were gonna die. We were gonna. He told you you wanna die today. Mm -hmm. Did he ask you to do anything at that point, either uh, at the point in time that he reloaded the gun or after he reloaded the gun? No, sir. Okay. Um, you had said earlier that he had uh, asked you to bring another somebody else inside the room? That was, no, that was before, like, he had shot anybody. Okay. He, like, I guess they were taking too long. It's like somebody to come in or whatever. He was waiting. And... He was he he had told me like to press the call button so somebody could come in. <coughs> and so what did he do after he reloaded the gun? Um, he started walking to the door, and um, I guess the door was closed and he opened it and went inside. I mean, went outside and was um, I guess was gonna I don't know. But then he got shot, I think, and then he came back inside. Uh, and see, as he reloaded the gun, he went to the door, opened the door, and started to walk out. Does he say anything at that point? Um, no, so I just remember hearing the um, the gun go off again. Okay. Uh, did you see him fire any other shots? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Um, describe that for us. How many additional shots did you see him fire after he shot the social worker? Uh, I think it was once more. Okay. And where did he fire towards? Did you see that? No, so it was just outside. Was okay. Could you see outside the door from where you were? Yeah. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Okay. Could you see anybody inside the hallway at that point when he fires? No, sir. I just seen <coughs> the back of him. Like, he was kind of covering the, the door. So he, you mentioned that he got shot as well. How did you know that he got shot? Because he came back out and he was like, there was, he was like, I guess, he was in pain. He was like, I guess, bleeding too. 
prior to getting shot, you said that he opened the door and then he fired the shot. Do you remember about how much time between when he opened the door and when he fired? Mm-hmm. No, sir. No, I don't know. Right. So he fires outside the door, he gets shot, um, and then he comes back inside the room. What happens after he gets shot and comes back inside the room? Um, he comes like on on the side, like in the corner, and um, uh, by then I already had my baby in my hands, and he was like trying to take him away. And um, was the baby awake at that point? No, he was still asleep. The baby was still sleeping. Mm-hmm. And you said that he was trying to take the baby away from you. Describe what he was doing. He was like trying to get him so he could like I guess shoot me. Did he still have the gun in his hand at that point? Yes, sir. Okay. What was he doing with the gun? He was trying. He was trying to point it at me. Okay. Did he hit you with it at that point? Um. No, sir. He had hit me again when everybody pressed the call button. Okay. Um, talk about that for us. You said he hit you when you didn't press the call button. Tell us about that. Yeah, because uh, when they were taking too long, um, he told me like to press the call button, and I, I didn't want to, so he's like stood up, and he called me a bitch, and uh, he hit me, like I think it was like two more times. Why didn't you want to press the call button? Because, uh, I mean, I just didn't want to, like, I don't know. When he asked you to press the call button, did he have the gun in his hand at that point? Oh, yes, sir. Okay. Do you recall uh, specifically where you got the gun in the head with the gun, Selena? Uh, yeah, I think it was uh, my left. The first time it was my left side. And then I think the second time it was like, it was like both sides, I think. On both sides of your head, the left and the right? Mm-hmm. Did you have any, uh, did you feel pain when he hit you with the gun in your hand? Yes, sir. Yeah. And did you have some visible injuries on your head from him striking you with the gun? Uh, I think so, yeah. Permission to approach the witness, Sean. You may. <coughs> Can you tell me how these photographs of how you looked in the hospital that day after this incident? The state's exhibits 3 through 11 accurately depict how you looked on October 22, 2002, and also accurately uh, depict the injuries that you sustained from the assault by Mr. Hernandez? Yes, sir. This time the state's going to offer state exhibit number three through 11, 10 to counsel. In the front, like, um. she can tell us what 
talking to him, telling him like to pretty much just like to give me the gun, to look at our serve. And um to like just calm down and like I guess like turn himself in. Okay. And did he make any further uh, statements or did he make any phone calls after that point? I think his his mom had called him, uh, and he he was talking to her and uh, told her what what had happened. And did you call what he was saying to his mother on the phone? Um, he just told her that he had shot somebody. Did you call if he was speaking in English or Spanish? Uh, Spanish. Okay. So he told his mom and father that he had shot somebody. Yes, sir. Did he say whether or not that, that person was still alive? Um, no, sir. I can't recall. All right. So you recall what, where was he when he was making this phone call? Was he still up? Was he down on the floor? Where was he at? He was still on on my right side, like in the corner, talking to her. Okay. So what happens next after he has this conversation with his mother? Um, she's trying to talk to him, and um, 
I'm trying to talk to him. What are you telling him? Um, just to calm down, just um, to throw the gun outside. At this point, could you hear anybody else from outside the room speaking or talking? Oh uh, yes, sir. One of the um, Methodist police, I guess, one of the officers there. Were they giving any kind of orders or commands to either yourself or to the defendant? Oh uh, yes, sir. They were um, telling him like to to throw the gun outside too, and to uh, to let us out. Mr. still has a gun at that point? Oh, um, yes, sir. Okay. Um, and you still have the baby in your arms, is that fair? Yes, sir. Okay. At some point, did Mr. lose, or did the defendant lose possession of the gun? Did he lose control of the gun at some point? Oh, uh, yes, sir. Tell us um, about that. What happened with the gun? After um, I was talking to him, telling him he kind of like, he was about to throw it outside. And he, I, well, I guess he was walking towards the door. And um, he fell and threw the gun. And when he threw it, I jumped, I jumped up and I grabbed it. And when you say he threw it, can you describe it for us? Did he, did he purposely throw it? Did he drop it? What happened with the gun? Yeah, he, uh, I guess because he was bleeding, he fell over and he, he dropped the gun. Like, so I got up and I um, went to go get it. What and was the gun? I'm sorry, I didn't touch it. I'll go ahead. Um, it was like I think on the last minute or something. I can't remember. So it was on the floor, the gun, or was it? You say it was by the bassinet. Yeah. Was it on the floor? Yes, sir. Okay. And so what did you do? Uh, I, I jumped up and I went to go grab it and I threw it outside. Okay. What was next? What was the defendant doing while you were grabbing the gun? He was on the floor. What did you do with the baby? I still had him in my hand. You still have the baby when you pick up the gun? Yes, sir. Okay. And what did you do with the gun when you okay. pick it up? I threw it outside. Um, so what did you do after you threw the gun outside? Did you say anything to the officers that were on top of you? Yeah, I told them to, uh, for them to come. Okay, cool. But we'll um, figure it out. To get my baby. But I was telling them, like, because I was scared they were going to shoot in the room, so I was telling them not to shoot him because I didn't want him to die either. Why did you feel like that? Why did you feel like you didn't want the defendant to die? I mean, that was, that was uh, just too much. I had already seen, you know. Just that's, that was my baby daddy. That's, you know. I still had my son and I just didn't, I didn't want them to kill him either. And when you said <clears throat> you'd already seen too much, what do you mean? I mean, him. Killed that lady in front of me, like, I mean, the nurse in front of me, like, it was, it was too much blood, I just, it was already a lot going on, you know. So, while, um, let's kind of back up a little bit. When he shot the nurse in the back of the head inside the room, was she, was she still there inside the room the whole time? Yes, sir, she, uh, she was on the floor. Okay. And Going back prior to when he was shot by the police officer, when he opens the door, where is the body of the social worker at the point? Um, she, she was kind of like, um, she was, she, I guess she was like by the door and he couldn't open it, so he like, he like forcefully, you know, opened the door with her, like, so like to move her on the side. Oh. Like on the side and stuff. Okay, so when he was trying to open the door, he couldn't open the door because the body was there, so he had to move her body with the door? Mm, yes, sir. Did you realize that um, when he shot outside of the door, after he shot the social worker the first time, he went back to the door and he shot outside the door? Do you realize that he had shot somebody else at that point, or did you not know that at that point? No, sir, I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't. And so, um, you threw the gun outside the room, you tell the officers, hey, out. the gun's no longer in here. Um, you tell them not to shoot him. What happens at that point? Um, they, they come in, and I gave him my baby. I told him, like, to help me, because I was still, I still couldn't get out the room, because I was, 
like I guess like plugged in and stuff. I couldn't leave, so I gave one of the officers my son, and they grabbed Nestor. Where was Nestor at when the officers entered the room? Um, in front of the bed, like on the floor in front of, by the bed. Okay. Was he upright or was he laying down? He was still. He was laying down. Okay. You recall Nestor making any statements at that point? Was he saying anything when the officers made entry into the room? No, sir, I don't. I really wasn't worried about him at, at the time. I was worried about myself. Okay. Um, were you still holding your sign at that time? Uh, I gave him to another, to an officer. When the officers came in, you were still holding the baby, though, correct? Oh, yes, sir. How was your baby? Was your baby injured at all? Yes, sir. So the officers took the defendant outside the room. Did you see the defendant at any point after that? No, sir. Did you have to have any kind of treatment for your injuries? <coughs> no, sir. So at some point, um, you all went through a process with the baby and you got some paternity test results, is that correct? Yes, sir. Where were the results of the paternity test? That he's the father. At this time, you're on pursuant to a stipulation with the defense, the state's going to offer a statement number 12, which is a DNA test report from DNA Diagnostic Center of Tennessee. Objection. Objection, All right, state's exhibit number 12 is admitted for all purposes. Permission to the <coughs> jury. You may. Thank you, Your Honor. Permission to summarize for the jury, Your Honor. You may. State's exhibit number 12 is again a DNA test report from the DNA Diagnostic Center showing that uh, the defendant, Mr. Mr. Hernandez, is 99.99997% uh, probably returning for the child, Jade Sanchez. Um, let me ask you this, Selena. Um, just in full transparency, you have been uh, convicted of a couple of felonies, is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. You have been convicted of burglary of a habitation back in 2015, is that correct? Yes, sir. And you were sentenced to three years in prison, is that right? Uh, I think 2015, I think that's the aggravated robbery. Okay, looks like you were sentenced to three years in prison for burglary of habitation in September of 2015. You were also, as you mentioned, convicted of aggravated robbery here in Dallas in 2015 as well. You were sentenced to five years in prison, is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, given that, have you told the truth to the jury today? Yes, sir. Does any of your criminal history have any bearing on what the defendant did that day? No, no, sir. And have you been totally honest and transparent with the jury about the actions that the defendant took place in yes. this Methodist Hospital on October 22nd, 2022? Yes, sir. Pass with the Thank you. Ms. Milko, I have a few questions for you, ma'am, if I might. Uh, in regards to the relationship that you and Nestor had about going up to the period right before this incident at the hospital, uh, there was a lot of issues between you and him in regards to whether or not this baby was actually his. Is that not correct? No, not really. You don't recall him telling you that he wasn't sure that this baby was his? In the beginning, but he was, he knew, he just, he knew. Well, I mean, but that was what was, that was what was leading up to the point in time when you ended up going to the hospital with Nestor, correct? What do you mean? I mean, there had been some discussions about that prior to the time that he took you to the hospital for you to give birth. No. Okay. Now, in regard to this gun, uh, you said that you weren't aware that he had uh, had a gun uh, when he came to the hospital that day. Is that right? Yeah, I didn't know he had it on him. Okay. Uh, you'd seen the gun before, had you not? Yes, sir. And in fact, uh, you had seen it the day before when you all were on the way to the hospital, didn't you? Oh, yes, sir. Did you have a discussion with Nestor the day that you were going to the hospital 
regarding whether or not you were going to give the baby his last name. Yes, sir. And did you tell Esther that if he would get rid of that gun, that you would take that you would give the baby his last name? Yes, sir. Okay. And so uh, at that point in time, did Esther not put the gun in your bag so that no. he would not have it? No. He didn't give you. The, he didn't put the gun in your bag so that you because you promised him that if, you, if he would give it up, that uh, you would give the baby his last name. No, he put it on the side of the inside the his car, the the truck he was driving. Okay. So your testimony is you didn't know that you didn't see that gun at all in the hospital before he was saying he just pulled it out of his pocket. Yeah, I, he left it in the truck. He when when we went in, he had uh, put it like on the like on the side of the door. I can't remember where. Um, but he didn't. He didn't give me nothing. Like he knew I'm. I'm, I'm having my son. I, I don't play with him. Like none of that. That's why I didn't want him to have the gun. Well, think about it just for a minute. You you've said two different things. You said one, he put it in the side of the car. Then you said he put it in the door of the car. Yeah, inside, like the door. Like he would. He had like a little thing that he would put it inside. I don't know, like a little hiding spot, I guess. So he didn't put it in the trunk of the car? No. Do you recall having a conversation being interviewed by these two folks right here on September the 25th of this year? Yes, sir. Do you remember telling those two folks when they interviewed you? You saw they were taking notes when they were talking to you, correct? Yes, sir. You don't recall telling them that uh, you uh, thought he put it in the trunk of the car? Not in the trunk. So now, the day before this all occurred, you and him had, he had taken you to the hospital, correct? Yes, sir. But you didn't want him to take you to the hospital, did you? Mm, no. Well, he was the father of your baby. Yes, sir. You're telling this jury <clears throat> that you guys weren't arguing, but you didn't want the father of your baby to take you to the hospital? Yeah, because that, that day he, we were just, Okay, you said the day that he, the, the, he took you to the hospital the day before the baby was born, correct? Oh, uh, yes, sir. All right. And you said that he was happy and excited at that point. Oh, uh, yes, sir. And you gave him an ultimatum about this, this gun that he had and told him that unless he gave up the gun, you weren't going to give the baby his last name. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So on the day that all this came, this started uh, on the 22nd, when he came back to the hospital that day, you said that when he came into the room, you said he was carrying a beer and that you got mad at him and you immediately pulled the blanket up over your head. Uh, yes, sir. You wouldn't even talk to him, would you? No, sir. Okay. Was there some discussion at that time regarding whether or not you had possibly or potentially given him a venereal disease? Here we go. It's It's John. Oh, was there Was there, in fact, an argument at that time leading up to this about two things. You're cheating on him and you're giving him potentially a venereal disease. No, sir. We didn't even, we didn't even talk at all. Well, but you your so your testimony is that he just came in there and he's just uncontrollably out of his mind for no reason when he had been happy and excited about the birth of this baby the day before. And that morning. Yeah, and so that morning he calls you and says, Hey, I'm thinking about getting a haircut before I come so we can have some family pictures made. Yes, sir. But then he shows up at the room, and when he walks in the room, you immediately pull the blanket over your head, and you refuse to talk to him, don't you? Um, yes, sir, because he, he brought a, a beer inside while we, when we just had our son. Like, who would do that? Well, okay, but it's just, I mean, it's a beer in a hospital room. It's not the end of the world. Are you? <laughs> yes, sir. I mean, I'm just, I'm just trying to find out that you're saying that all of a sudden uh, he came in and he's mad for no reason whatsoever. That's him. Now, when this was taking place, were, how, how long were you laying in the bed? No, what do you mean? In the hospital bed. How, at what point did you get up out of the hospital bed? I, I didn't get up. Till after all that happened. 
Did you not get up and when he started to look around into the and look into the bathroom prior to the nurse coming into the room? No. You never stood up. No, I couldn't even if if I had to stand up, I had to have a nurse with me because I was plugged in like to this one thing. Like I couldn't, I couldn't get up. Okay. And did you have the baby in your arms at this time, or was the baby in a bassinet? The whole time before that happened, he was on the bassinet. Okay. When did you get the baby out and have the baby in your arms? When he was walking like towards my son, and I didn't want him to get him. Okay, when was that in this whole in this whole scenario that you described? Was it prior to the okay? There had before been, he shot. Okay, the nurse. let me back up just a moment. There had been another nurse came into the room while you and Esther were there, while you had the blanket pulled up over you, and she came in and gave you some medication. Did she not? Yes, sir. Okay, how soon was that before this argument escalated? Um. I mean, because he, he, right after she left, I think she had, he had got on the phone. That's when he got on the phone with his family. And he was on the phone for a little bit, so. Okay. Now, so at this point in time, you're saying you've got the blanket pulled over your head. He's trying to talk to you. You refuse to talk to him. He wasn't trying to talk to me. Since he walked in, the, the only thing he said as soon as he walked in, he was like, oh, our, you know, he's asleep talk, talking about our son. And then he just went um, and sat down on the on the side of by the bed. He went and sat down on the side by the bed. Mm -hmm. Did he try to pick up the baby? No, he was asleep. He just no, he didn't try. Okay. I'm trying to figure out, uh, Miss Villatori, if you can explain to this jury what was that triggered this whole situation to escalate. If you know. That's what I'm, I'm trying to figure the same thing. Why he do that? Because so we were good th in the morning. We were good. Like, he was happy. He, I was I, I was texting him the whole time, telling him that the lady from the, uh, that morning, the lady for the, I guess, the social security, you know, the social security thing uh, had came in. It was like, she was also asking me, like, for his last name, and I didn't know. And uh, I was texting him, telling him that I need, we needed his ID and stuff, like, like we were good. Well, we I don't know why he did this. Like for no reason, he's. Right. So you you don't you don't recall that there was any conversation that actually started this whole situation that got no you mad and him mad. Yeah, he came. I don't know why, how or was he? If he was even mad, I just remember seeing the beer and I thought already like he was drunk. Like, like that's the only thing. That was why would you? Money. Why would you immediately come to that assumption? I mean, just because he drinks a lot. Like when he drinks, he he doesn't just like sip. He chugs like he be he be drinking. But you said that you immediately came to that assumption before you really even took time to speak with him or talk to him, did you? I mean, I kind of knew like when I, I seen the beer because he had to he had took long to like come to the hospital. When I seen the beer, I, like I. I already knew he, he had been drinking. Okay. Now, Ms. Thor, at the time that your testimony that the uh, uh, the nurse came in, uh, did you were you in the fact not laying there with the blanket over your head at that time? When one nurse? When the nurse came in, the second nurse came in that morning. The one that he shot? Or the one that was shot, yes, ma'am. No, sir. You didn't have the blanket over your head at that time? No, sir. What were you doing as far as trying to... Uh, now, you're you told the jury at this point in time you're concerned that he might do something to somebody. Is that right? Oh, well, yeah. I was just, I kind of like, I don't know. I didn't think he was, he would do anything that dumb, like. So what, and, and, and so your testimony to this jury was that he just walked up behind her. Is that correct? Oh, yes, sir. Did he, did he not, in fact, strike you and hit you while this nurse was in the room? No, sir. He didn't hit you with that gun with the, while the nurse was in the room? No, sir. So it's your testimony that he just shoots her for no reason, and then he comes back. And did you, when the witness in this situation did you say that he reloaded that weapon? As soon as he shot her. So he shot her and then reloaded the weapon? Yes, sir. So one bullet was shot, and then he took, you say, he 
took the time to reload his gun at that point? He just, I just, I don't know if he was like reloaded, but I just remember him. Like, I don't know how, how many bullets he had in his thing or whatever, but I just remember him putting out his bullets from behind and just putting some more bullets in, in his, um, in his gun. All right. Now, are you, you're telling the jury that you were still laying in the bed at this point in time? I was still laying. I couldn't, I couldn't get off the bed, like. Well, you could get off the bed because I believe we're going to see some videos in a few moments where you were up standing outside the bed yelling and screaming. Is that not correct? After, after he dropped the gun and I jumped up. Okay. Well, that's what I want to ask you then. How was it that you were able to jump up at that point in time while you were still hooked up? I was hooked up, but I jumped up and I grabbed the gun. And What did you do when you I grabbed threw, the gun? I threw it like I had to... Cause I was, it was like a needle, I guess, uh, what are the, something in, in, in my arm. So I had to like slide the gun outside, like. Okay, how'd you slide the gun outside? I just put it on the floor and I slid it. Like, okay. Now, and did it slide out from underneath the door? The door was open. So your testimony is that the door was open at this point in time? Yeah, after he shot, yeah. Okay. Now, so are you sure that you're, did you not have to open that door, pull it open to throw the gun out? No, the door was closed. I mean, the door was open. Okay. So when the, when you said that Nestor went over and opened the door, you heard a gunshot. Is that right? Mm hmm Could you you could you see anything outside of that door? I just seen I was I had seen him. Do you have any idea what Nestor saw when he opened the door? No. All you did is all you heard a gunshot, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, when you testified a little bit earlier, you told this jury that at the time that uh, you grabbed the gun and threw it out of the door, that uh, you had the baby in your arms. You recall testifying to that earlier? Yes, sir. Okay. I'm still trying to figure out at what point in time did you pick up the baby? You haven't described ever picking up the baby since I've spoken to you. You, <coughs> you told me he was in the bassinet. Yeah, he was in, in the bassinet, but after he hit me, he, like the first time he walked around, it was walking towards the bassinet, and that's when I picked him up. Okay. And this was before anything happened in the else happened in that room? Yes, sir. Right. So when you got out and you took the gun, you said you picked up the gun by the bassinet and you threw it out the door of the room? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <coughs> And it was it, and then at that point in time, he said that Nestor left the room one more time, and when he came back in, he'd been shot. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Did you know what had happened outside that room, or was there any way for you to have possibly done? I just heard the gun. I didn't. I didn't know he had shot somebody else. I just remember, like he came in and I seen the blood, and I I kind of figured. It was him who had got shot, but I didn't know somebody else had got shot. All right, and, when, and did did Nestor tell you he had shot him? Did Nestor even know someone else had been shot? Oh, <coughs> sure. I'm gonna object to speculations. He has no idea what was in the mind of the defendant. I'll rephrase. Did Nestor make any statements to you that he had opened that door and shot somebody else? No, sir. <clears throat> when he talked to his mother, he had, and you were listening to that phone conversation, correct? Yes, that phone sir. conversation was taking place in Spanish. Uh, yes, sir. And you were you speak Spanish? Yes, sir. And you were able to understand the words that were being spoken between the defendant and his mother, correct? Yes, sir. And at that point in time, he told him that he'd shot one person, didn't he? Yes, sir. He didn't. He, he wasn't even aware from the conversation that you overheard that there had been two people shot. Was it? Jack, speculation again. So you can't it's say what was in his head. Sustained. Was there anything about that conversation, ma'am, that would have led you to believe? that Nestor had knowledge that he had in fact shot two people. No, sir. And from your vantage point, you have no idea what Nestor was able to see or observe when he still opened the door that second time. No, sir. The, uh, each time you talked about Nestor going to the door, you said Nestor opened the door. Is that right? Mm -hmm. yes, what sir. was it that caused that door to remain open after the uh, Nestor went out the second time and was shot? You said he went over and opened the door and walked out and 
came back in and he was shot? Yeah, I think, I think it was like the way the nurse was at, like the way she was on the floor, I think that's, I just remember it, was, it, it being open. I didn't really pay. I don't well, know why. I well, in know. fact, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, man. In fact, you told this jury earlier that uh, Vester had moved the, the uh, body of the nurse so that he could that he could open the door again. You don't recall testifying to that? Whenever he was trying the first, whenever he tried to open the door, she was on the way. So he like with the door, he slid her like. You know, like on the side, he didn't move it nowhere. So he, she was still like right behind the door, you know, like. Well then how is it you were able to throw the handgun out the door if the nurse was in the way? Because I reached like all the way as much as I could and I just threw it, I just slid in, like. And it's your testimony that at that point, Mister's laying on the ground, he's bleeding and uh, you're hollering to the police and the police come in and secure the scene, is that correct? Yes, sir. And there's no question that when you heard Nestor Hernandez speaking to his mother on the phone, from that conversation, he had only indicated that he knew he had shot one person. Is that correct? Yes, sir. That's all I had, Your This had for this time. All right. State, just briefly, Your Honor. Go ahead. So, Mayor, you indicated that, um, so the defense attorney asked you about. <clears throat> your interview with us prior to trial he talks about the gun inside the truck <clears throat> and he says that you said something about putting the gun in the trunk but isn't it true that you told us that the gun was inside the truck at that time yeah it was inside yeah okay and you also testified on cross with the defense attorney that you were not able to get off the bed you're describing all this hectic uh, activity that's taking place inside the room with, by the defendant but you're not able to get up off the bed why is that I mean like, why couldn't I get off the bed? Why couldn't you get off the bed? I mean, I just, I just couldn't. I, I just couldn't. I was stuck to like the this one, like with a syringe or something. I just had it. I couldn't. I don't know. And then I had C, a C-section, so it was just. I was barely. They were barely showing me how to like move around and stuff. So I really didn't even know how to like. No, I just, I just couldn't. Okay, so you say you had a C-section, right? Mm -hmm. Were you in any pain on that day from having a C-section the day before? No, yes, sir. Yes, okay. sir. So you were in pain during this whole ordeal? No, oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and you had also indicated that you were attached to some machinery, some hospital machines? Oh, yes, sir. You said a syringe, but is it more like an, an yeah. IV? Like yeah, a like an IV. Yeah, a line. For medication and things of that sort? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and going back to our interview prior to trial, um, you testified that you weren't quite sure how much time took place between when the defendant went back to the door to shoot after he had shot the social worker. He went to the door, opened the door, and fired again. Um, do you recall telling us that you that as soon as he opened the door, he pretty much fired immediately after opening the door? Yes, sir. Were you afraid that the defendant was going to kill you that day? Oh yeah, yeah. Were you afraid that he was going to kill or harm your baby? Oh. I didn't think he was gonna harm him, but mo like mostly me. Like, I don't think his intentions was to uh, kill our son, but just me and him. Is that why he was trying to get the baby from you? Do you think because he was trying to kill you? Yes, sir. Yeah. Were you afraid that he may try to kill somebody else that was not inside the room? Oh uh, yes, sir. Yeah. Or gave you that impression that he may want to hurt somebody else? I mean, just somebody else. Because he reloaded, he was trying to go back outside too. That's all I have, Thank you. All right. I have no further questions this time, Ron. All right, may this one has been released? What's that, Sean? It's up to All right, thank you, uh, Ms. Leah Toro. You are